<clears throat> Is this working? I think it's live streaming. Let's see. Oh, great. I think it's working. Hey, hi, Geek Workshop. How are you? I'm just setting up a few things here. Um, get my hand out of the way there. I uh, guess it's, it's a little better. Hello, Top Turtle. How are folks today? <coughs> I have a slight cough. I've, uh, it's actually part of the reason I haven't been uh, live streaming much lately, is I've been sick for a while. Um, not the worst, but enough that it was like uh, my energy level was low and I had a really bad cough constantly. It would have been really annoying to listen to as a live stream. Hey, Ghost Dog, it has been a little while. Well, for the holidays, I visited some family and then I uh, then I got sick during that so it's been a little bit so I don't know how well this is gonna work I've been sort of just sketching out like uh, I felt like drawing a transformer so uh, hello Roy filled hello TARDIS rider snowy in Tennessee Ooh, yeah snowy all along the East Coast these days let's see recently I realized you kinda look like Walter White in the Breaking Bad finale Jesus, he couldn't have looked much worse in that show other than the finale. He was dying of cancer. He was totally weak. He was being hunted by the authorities. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Happy New Year, Roy Field. Thank you very much. So, um, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I was really into Transformers. That was, that was my main thing that I kind of liked as a kid was Transformers. But um, it's, I sold them all. Uh, it's been a really long time since I have done anything about Transformers. Like, I haven't watched any of the shows. I haven't bought any of the toys. But I saw this guy in the stores the other day. Yesterday, literally. And I, uh, I picked it up, and I sort of want to draw it. So that's sort of what I'm thinking of right now. That's what I've sort of been sketching out here. So I've sort of been using this as a model, like... You can really pose it, too. All right, hold on. Let me see what some of these questions are. I'm actually thinking about going to college in Seattle, Cornish. Wow, well, good luck, uh, Ghost Dog. Not sure what uh, kind of major you're thinking about, and I'm not super familiar with that one because I didn't grow up here, but um, that's exciting, man. Top Turtle says that there are about five to six inches of snow in, ten in Kentucky. In Kentucky right now. Wow. Uh, I haven't been to Kentucky in a long time, but I, I used to go out there um, back in the early 2000s. My friends uh, Robert Kirkman, and Tony Moore, and Benito Serino, they all lived out in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, and I would go out and uh, hang out with them there. Um, I like Kentucky. It's nice. Let's see, Geek Workshop says he has a Gen 1 and 2 Optimus. I used to as a kid. I, I, I sold them. Wait, why does Royfield Brown say that he's going to um, need to log off? All right, Comics Legend says that it it sounds bad, but it looks like Grimlock is boning himself. I sort of understand what you're saying there um, with one behind the other, but I, I'm going to try to pull them out so that one is clearly in the foreground, and I'm, I'm sort of trying to imply the transformation. It's very difficult to try to do that in a single illustration. But um, anyway, so I'm just sort of like trying to m map out the um, the big um, what would I say like the the big major lines of uh, of Grimlock here and uh, yeah it's 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 actually a pretty complex design this toy it's got a lot of detail to it so um, I'm probably going to um, have to decide on on not representing some of that stuff because too much detail and uh, I feel like it wouldn't really look like um, 
like anything and as an illustration I think I need to uh, try to um, pick and choose what I want to represent but we'll see we'll see so I'm just sort of sketching in lightly some uh, some of the stuff that I need to include sort of a main line up here let's see um, what do you mean that sounds bad? I missed something. Um, oh, Royfield says he's never understood the appeal of Transformers. Um, Transformers, you know, I guess for me, um, I grew up, um, you know, I'm talking like uh, real young, like nursery school, kindergarten, first grade. My, I had a grandfather who had these um, wooden Chinese puzzle boxes where you had to shift and turn them all sorts of different ways to to unlock the box. And I found those fascinating. I was really into just the idea of undoing them and then putting them back together. And, um, and then it was only like a year or two later that <clears throat> Transformers debuted, and it was that same sort of idea. Um, and I was still pretty young when I got into Transformers. Like, you know, I was, you know, I'm talking like third grade at, fourth grade, something like that at most when I was most into them. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I've just always really sort of li liked the idea. I haven't always cared for the execution of everything. Uh, oh, cool, an art college. Good luck, Ghost Dog. I, I'm glad to hear that. that that's really exciting. Um, yes, I've read all of the old Transformers comics geek workshop. I um, That was that was my entry point into... Um, into comics was discovering the uh, the Transformers comics and um, uh, they weren't that great actually they they were okay for the first couple of years and then they uh, I don't know they they, they kind of went downhill um, my understanding is that like uh, they were better um, over in England actually like the, the, that they cared a little bit more about them I don't know Actually, you know what? I'm going to mark this for blacking that out. Yeah. Anyway, I know it's like, you know, we, we all have our uh, things uh, in pop culture that we uh, like and don't like. And uh, for whatever reason, I've always liked the idea of Transformers. So when I saw this guy, I just decided I wanted to give a shot at uh, drawing him. Because this was one of my favorite toys as a kid, and it really looks a lot like that one. So it's basically just I'm drawing on nostalgia. I'm drawing on nostalgia to draw. Um, I missed all but one since October. Oh, Milos. Well, hey, hey, Milos. Nice to see you again. Um, I haven't done a ton like lately. I've been a little sick. Kira, don't worry about me. I'm doing fine, man. Um, I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I, I've... Yeah, it's scary. Uh, Puerto Rico still without power, and here in mainstream, uh, mainstream mainland, uh, uh, North America, we're we're actually starting to feel some of that because um, Puerto Rico uh, produces most of our um, saline bags that uh, uh, hospitals use, and and so now we're facing a shortage because Puerto Rico is uh, still largely without power. So that's a little scary and frustrating. Um, Kiro's from uh, Puerto Rico, so wishing you the best there. Um, hoping that we can get things as close to back to normal as possible. I'm just sort of like sketching in some of the main details, but I'm also trying to dissuade myself from drawing absolutely everything. It's, uh, it's tricky. <laughs> but I'll do this for just a little bit and then I'll uh, switch over to inking and that's probably where I'll uh, put most of the detail in for this drawing. 55% <coughs> power. Wow, that's crazy. Let's see. Um, 
Royfield says, I've always been told to get into them. Weren't they a toy that became a comic cartoon? Uh, yes, but it all sort of happened at the same time. It was planned out that there would be a toy to uh, support uh, the line. And uh, the, a lot of the original toys were simply uh, licensed from two or three different uh, Japanese toy lines. So, um, yeah. All right, what do we got here for a sort of Oh, I'm drawing this and I'm thinking of uh reminds me of like uh Godzilla. That's um I'm going to be reviewing Godzilla comics pretty soon. It's uh, something I'm getting ready to uh, do. It should be a really fun episode for everybody. I, th I think I've got some interesting details and fun stuff. But it's not the next episode. There's there's one or two more before that. All right. So, okay. I'm going to ink a little bit of this um, so that I've got some more definition for myself before I go much further. Uh, let's see. Uh, Milos asks about my job situation. I don't have a, a full-time job yet. I have had a number of interviews uh, this past week, which is good. So I'm feeling better about things. Um, uh, and um, I'm keeping busy in the meantime. I'm actually lettering a, a comic book uh, for, for somebody that's going to self-publish something. He approached me and... Uh, I thought that the story and art looked good, so uh, keeping busy with that as well. Um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> um, what is your favorite movie? Mine is The Iron Giant. It literally made me cry at the end. Iron Giant's a uh, very well done movie. I uh, definitely agree there. Um, what's my favorite movie? You know, I mean, it changes. I, I will admit that. Um, Hmm, what's my favorite movie? Uh, I'm not sure. I can give you like two or three that like would vie for that title. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Ghostbusters, um, Empire Strikes Back. They're all kind of old now that I'm thinking of it. Yeah, I'd have to think some more. There's some others that I really love. Um, hmm. Interesting question. Guess I haven't thought about it lately. Uh, oh, let's see. Tardis Rider asks if I've seen Black Lightning. I haven't. Um, let me think. I guess it's probably on right now uh, on West Coast time. I'll um, I'll I'll, I'll definitely uh, be checking it out, but um, I'll watch it on. Um, on on demand tomorrow. Um, like I say, I've been pretty busy. I was uh, lettering a comic for a bunch of the afternoon, looking for my next job, sending out resumes, and uh, and then I was like, I need a break. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a little and interact with some of the nice folks that I haven't been able to talk to in a while. But I do want to see it. Um, I hope it's good. Uh, kind of strange that uh, this one isn't set in the same um, Flash and Arrow continuity, huh? Oh well, that's okay. I'm sure that they'll uh, get around to having a crossover someday anyway. It's all on the same network. Uh, Black Lightning was much better, in my opinion, than Arrow or Flash. Less soap opera, says Tardis Rider. That's interesting, because honestly, the uh, character has always, um, a big part of uh, Jefferson Pierce has been his home life with his wife and two daughters, and his work life. You know, he's a principal. So, that's interesting that, that, it, that you say it's less soap opera. Maybe you mean it's me less melodramatic? Or did they really de-emphasize his, his work life and his family life? Because I actually think that that's one of the things that makes Black Lightning 
one of the more interesting black superheroes is that he has a very well-defined, well-rounded civilian life that could almost be plenty interesting without any of the superhero stuff. But um, I'll have to check it out myself. Let's see, Skull Diamond 94 joins us and says, Awesome. Godzilla comics are awesome, whether it's the Marvel, Dark Horse, or best of all, IDW's line of Godzilla titles. Rulers of Earth is my favorite, featuring Matt Frank and Jeff Zorno. I haven't read that one, but I did read um, IDW's um, uh, one, what was it, like the Hundred Year, the Century War, or the Hundred Year War, something like that, by uh, Jeff Stucco, and that was great. That was really a good comic. That was that was really solid. Um, uh, and then uh, Godzilla Goes to Hell was okay. I didn't, I didn't love that one, but... Yeah, um, I'm I'm thinking I'm probably going to be reviewing Marvel's take though because that is definitely the weirdest take on Godzilla because it takes place within the Marvel universe with all the superheroes. Yeah, technically that version of Godzilla is still a part of the Marvel universe because even after they lost the rights, or didn't even try, I guess, to renew the rights, um, they uh, they just said that he got, Godzilla got mutated into a different gigantic monster, so they still have uh, that in their continuity. Let's see, uh, True Fan Forum joins us and says, Black Lightning was pretty good, perhaps not quite as much action as some might want, but I appreciate how they developed the characters in the first episode. So far, I like it. Yeah, that can be definitely a trick for a superhero show because we want to see the big budget stuff. We're sort of spoiled these days with like uh, the big budget movies. At the same time, for a TV show, you really have to like the characters and know about them and buy into their lives because they just don't have the budget to have nothing but wall-to-wall -wall action. So it's a tricky balance for TV shows because of how good so many of the movies are these days. It's not filmed in the same city, so that's what I think. No crossovers yet. Oh, that's from Milish. Oh, okay, so they're not filming it in Vancouver. They're probably filming it in, like, what, like Atlanta or something like that? Or North Carolina, maybe? One of those other areas that's cheap? Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. That's probably why they, they're not going to quickly do a crossover, but I, I bet that they'll do something someday. I mean, The Flash has introduced the idea of alternate realities, and that's how they, they work Supergirl in, so I'm sure that they'll do that someday for, uh, and they've also used it for, uh, what, uh, The Ray. The Ray takes place in um, an alternate universe, and that's crossed over with uh, them. They want to get everybody. If they can work in Constantine, they'll work in Black Lightning. Uh, True Fan Forum says that they did really focus on uh, Black Lightning's family and job, so less soap, soap opera means less melodrama. Okay, that's that that totally makes sense. Um, and Tardis Rider backs that up too. Less melodramatic, yeah. Different feel from the Arrowverse. Um, that makes sense. Let's see. Tad Sears joins us and says, "Speaking of Marvel and Godzilla." Did you hear that Marvel just got the rights for Conan, Conan this month? I did hear this. I'm curious to see what they plan to do with him these days. <coughs> yeah, um, to a lot of people, Marvel's version with John Bashema as the artist on Conan, that's still their definitive version of Conan, period. Like, you know, we've got... The Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, but to a lot of people, it's those, uh, and really me, I should say, uh, that John Buscema version from Marvel throughout the 70s and 80s was like the definitive version of who Conan is. Um, yeah, I, I hope that Marvel can do something cool with it. I don't know who who they're placing on it. And these days, and for like a long time now, I really only get excited about certain creators rather than like 
a publisher. I think that publishers, you know, uh, sometimes they do well and sometimes they don't do well for a while and then they come back. Like these days, I would say that DC is doing a lot of stuff really, really well. Um, and Image is doing a lot of stuff really, really well. Marvel only sort of has their act together. But that's just my opinion, you know? It's like, what do I know? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's cool, though, that, that Marvel uh, got the rights to Conan. I mean, I hope that they care and do something really interesting with him. Let's see, how's this go? That's actually pretty complex. <clears throat> the Godzilla movies made in America sucked. The 1999 one was really stupid. Totally agree. That was a terrible movie. Uh, and the 2014 one barely had Godzilla in the movie at all and felt like it was wasting my time. That's from Top Turtle. Um, yeah, uh, there were some good things and some bad things about the uh, American Godzilla movie, but overall... Uh, I totally agree that there was nowhere near enough actual Godzilla. That was that's why we're there. Come on. But uh, what can you do? So I'm holding my like toy here as reference every once in a while. Sorry. Uh, makes me look like a little kid probably. I don't know. I can hear one of my cats uh, trying to get my attention, but it's not food time. Quiet, buddy. You just ate. All right, I'm going to focus on his robot mode for a minute, which means I have to try to remember how to transform this. I've only done it once before. I think I can do it. Uh, well, meanwhile, I'll look at the questions. Anyone watch The Gifted and The Runaways? I have not si seen either TV show, Milos, <coughs> but I'm very interested in both of them. Um, but especially uh, Runaways, because I really loved uh, that comic. I, I, I like almost, yeah, I like everything, actually, by uh, Brian K. Vaughn. And uh, The Runaways is no exception. I think it's a great comic, so um, I would be very curious some point to uh, catch that show, but I don't have Hulu, so um, I have to get that at some point, I guess. Um, am I using a brush pen? If so, what brand? I was using a brush pen just then, um, Top Turtle, and it, that particular one was uh, a Pigma from Sakura, the um, Japanese pen maker. Um, they're pretty good. They, they last a few pages before they fall apart. Let's see. Uh, do you read any of the current Star Wars comics? Asks Geek Workshop. You know what? Um, I was when it first debuted, and then I just got so busy that I, I fell behind. Um, I'll probably get back to it, though, at some point. Um, what I was reading was good. I was... The, the stuff by Jason Aaron I, I really enjoyed, so hopefully I, I can find some time to, um, to to get to read some more. Um, I'll probably have to read it digitally or something when I get the when I when I can carve out some time. So there's here's what I'm looking at now, and I want to focus on how I'm supposed to draw this head. Um, 
what uh what shows are all of you guys uh watching right now that's like uh top tier you know some of your favorite stuff because i'm trying to think and um uh, there's a few things that I'm sort of like catching when I have the time, but nothing um, is sort of like appointment television for me right now. Uh, but, um, you know, maybe I'm missing something good that I don't know about. So you tell me what's uh, floating your boat. because I don't want to miss out. Let's see. Uh, I was surprised with Runaways. It subverted my expectations. I thought Alex was going to be my favorite character. It turned out to be Gert, which is a big surprise for me. That's from Milos. I Yeah, Gert was my favorite character in the comics, actually. Uh, eventually, anyway. She... Uh, took a while but then I was like oh this character is really cool um but I also really like um oh, who's the witch character it's been a while since I've read see like when I'm focusing on my reviews I get like really down into the weeds with like w one comic and I start forgetting a couple details about other things that I actually like and enjoy um, oh well. Let's see. Uh, Milo says he loves sci-fi's magicians. I've never watched that. That's interesting. Uh, ba -ba -ba, people talking back and forth. Hello, Sly Fly guys. Thank you for joining. Appreciate that. What camera is your drawing being captured by? Let's see. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Uh, this is a Logitech HD. So <coughs> I don't think it's anything too fancy. It's really my um, it's really my fiance's camera. She she's the one that uh, bought it and set this uh, live streaming thing up. Um, and so I just sort of was like, hey. You're not using it. Can I? Can I completely take over? <laughs> um, and and she let me. Um, but I bother her. I say like, you know, you're a fantastic artist. Uh, you should be doing a live stream too. And so hopefully at some point she uh, starts doing that because uh, she's a fantastic artist. Better than me, I would say. Uh, let's see. Uh, Milos describes the magicians as Harry Potter meets Narnia Chronicles meets Game of Thrones meets a young adult novel. Hmm, interesting. Oh, thank you, True Fan Forum. Nico Minoru is who I was thinking of. Sister Grimm, she's the witch on Runaways. Can't believe I forgot that, but I'm uh, busy drawing here. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. One, two, three claws, and then one, two, three, four fingers. Muttering to myself, thank you for your patience. All right, let's uh, set this guy here and uh, get back to the brush. Um. <clears throat> Anybody else out there uh, enjoy um, Godzilla? 
because that's uh, one that I've got coming up. I mentioned that a little bit ago. Uh, and um, I agree that America hasn't really done Godzilla great at all yet. Uh, but I do think that that last movie, um, Kong Skull Island, was surprisingly well done, I thought. I liked that a lot. Mm. I've tried to get into Godzilla, although I never really have. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I wonder if... Um, Godzilla is too tied to the eras that it that it sort of was made in. Um, hmm. Because I've always really enjoyed uh, Godzilla, but I, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. But I also just in general really like giant robots. Robots. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, that's why I've... Maybe that's part of why I like Transformers. Um, I went and saw that uh, Power Rangers movie uh, last summer just because I thought it was going to have lots of gigantic robots and uh, monsters. And uh, it actually didn't have a lot of that. Spoiler. But I also, like, I, I shouldn't have gone. I, I, I don't know a lot about Power Rangers, so. I don't know. Maybe somebody that knows more about them would have liked that more. <coughs> mm. Milos agrees that uh, you like Kong a lot. Just remove Hiddleston and the Blonde Girl, and it's a great movie. Hey, Shirley. Nice to see you. I'm just doodling some uh, robot stuff here. For a while, anyway. Yeah, I guess the characters weren't uh, the deepest, but... Uh, yeah, it's okay. It was still about something, and uh, I liked it. Um... Uh, Gotta say, the special effects in the last um, uh, King Kong movie like really surprised me with how good I thought that they were. Like, I I just thought that they were incredible. Geek Workshop says I had a weird dream where Punisher tried to kill Hulk, and somehow Hulk ended in an amusement park, and then he helped the Transformers. It was weird. Well, that's a dream for you, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, here, I'll break that down for you. Um, it means you are the Punisher, and you're trying to kill your own anger, and you ended up displacing it and getting it angry with something from your childhood. Hmm. Now, I just made that up, and it almost sounded like it made sense. Um, yeah, I'm excited for you guys to see the uh, comic that I'm lettering right now. Uh, it's actually about uh, robots. Uh, it's, it's funny. It's fun. It's a cool little comic. I can't say much because I, I didn't write it, so it's not my place to. But as soon as it's out, I'll uh, do my part promoting it since I decided to work on it and all. Uh, so Hopefully uh, at least a few of you guys are interested in that. Did everybody see my um, latest episode? I made a... Uh, completely new intro for the uh, for the new year. I, uh, I hope everybody likes it okay because you'll be listening to it for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I had fun on that project. Uh, 
there's a there's a little bit of animation, not a lot, but boy, animation takes a a long time. So it was uh, it was a lot of work. All right, let's see. Um, True Fan Forum says, I try to get into these giant monster movies, but they don't catch on with me. They're good, but not my cup of tea, I guess. Fair. Godzilla might be more relevant than ever because Rocket Man and Baby Man are ready to obliterate each other. Jesus, that's a scary uh, truth. Um, yeah, the latest Godzilla movie, uh, Shin Godzilla from Japan, I thought was fantastic. Uh, the angle it takes is focusing on the bureaucracy of government. And I know that sounds a little boring, but that's sort of the argument, is it's trying to look at how do the people that actually get things done, that get people to safety and that engage the right scientists to figure out how to stop a threat to the country, in this case Godzilla, like, how does that all work? And um, I just thought it was really well done and interesting. And, uh, I, yeah, I thought it was a blast. I, I Wow. It was a really interesting uh, take on Godzilla that felt extra relevant because of their current problems with uh, the Fukushima nuclear reactor ever since that tsunami uh, damaged it. You know, they've been dealing with a uh, leaking nuclear reactor. And uh, they really use Godzilla as a potent metaphor for, for dealing with that kind of a problem. So uh, I like Shin Godzilla a lot. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope that they make uh, more. I hope they make more. Thanks, True Fan Forum, for, for the compliment. Uh, Geek Workshops is, and Top Turtle are talking about... The Ben Riley comic book. I'm not reading it. Tardis Rider is dozing off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. Milos Light Shin Godzilla. Geek Workshop says if you had to kill one comic character permanently and they could never come back, which would it be? I'm trying to take this seriously. Let's see. What comic character would I kill? that couldn't come back. Well, it might be Batman. Specifically Bruce Wayne. Excuse me. I would kill Bruce Wayne. I would say he we um we've told a lot of stories with that version of Batman. Let's really like let the next generation permanently take over. Let's let, you know, Dick Grayson or somebody else become the new Batman. And I think that that would carry a lot of weight if you really permanently eliminated Bruce Wayne. Um, but that would be a that would be a tough one to convince any publisher of, I'm sure. But uh, you know. He's been around a long time. And I think that Batman, the character, is very versatile. But maybe the idea of, like, you know, a white billionaire that just sort of buys his way into becoming a superhero, maybe that isn't uh, as relevant as it used to be, you know? I mean, he is a self-made man in terms of how, how much training he put into himself physically and mentally. But it's also a little hard to, to relate to, like, this guy that was just born into billions. Um, Tony Stark is a little different because he actually, like, runs his company, and it's his genius that, like, makes it work. <laughs> uh, anyway. Sorry, you just got me speculating about stuff. Uh, it's an interesting question. Thanks. <clears throat> M 
Mark L. Dude joins us and says, I love your videos, Chris. I hope you're well and keep up the great work. Have you ever held any panels at cons or tabled? Uh, yes, to both, although it's been a while. Um, and, and certainly not at, like, you know, San Diego Comic Con or something. But let's see. Um, I have been on panels at the Small Press Expo a couple different years. Um, one time it was talking about um, independent self-publishing. I was on a panel um, with a bunch of my local, at that point it was Washington, D.C., local uh, friends talking about how you um, collaborate and get stuff printed and all those sorts of questions. Uh, that was interesting. Another panel I did at Small Press Expo was uh, talking about 24-hour comic book day. That's something I've done a couple times, and uh, I was invited to just relay my experiences. I was uh, flattered and, and honored to uh, to do that. So um, those are some that I've spoken at. Um, trying to think now. Um, wh where have I tabled? I've tabled at I've tabled at Small Press Expo a number of years. That takes place in Bethesda, Maryland, and now I live in Seattle, so I haven't done that in a long time. Um, I've tabled at Baltimore Comic Con. Um, what else? I actually, uh, my friends and I put on for four years running a, um, a comic book and art show uh, called the Counter Culture Festival in Washington, D.C. So for four years I uh, tabled there. And, and it went on after I, uh, had, I left, so... Uh, but anyway, yeah, so those are a few things. Thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Hello, Victor. That is a really interesting uh, icon that you have there. <sighs> True fan forum would kill off Hypno Hustler. He pains me. <laughs> uh, Miller says, truth time. I never really liked Batman too much for the reasons Chris listed, and I found him to be too obsessed with his parents' murder and some other reasons. Yeah, I think that, like, his parents' murder might send him in, in the direction of wanting to prevent crime, but he shouldn't be so obsessed with his own parents as an adult. Like, he should have had therapy and, and been able to deal with that, because we all lose our loved ones. Like, maybe they're not murdered in front of us, but, you know, people have car accidents and cancer and all sorts of you know, really tragic things that happen to us, and uh, it's kind of weird that Bruce Wayne can't get over that. Now, if I like it when they sort of write him as a guy that's just like, well, I just want to prevent something like that from happening to someone else. So I'm like, okay, that I sort of get, but it is still a little weird that he's so obsessed with, like, his own parents' like death and that he can't get over it. It's you know what, it makes sense when you consider the era it was created. The original superheroes were very much power fantasies for young, aimed at least, at young men. Uh, so it's just that like superhero comics have sort of run that well pretty dry, so they've sort of moved on. Um, if you're gonna do like a, a power fantasy, like you've got a you've got now like specific characters that you can do that with, like Shazam or Captain Marvel. Um, anyway, just some of my random rambling thoughts. Uh, Batman: Mask of the Phantasm is my favorite movie. For me, he gets the most character development in there. Yes, Batman: Mask of the Phantasm is a fantastic and still, I would argue, still underrated movie. Very, very good. Very, very good. Very well done. <sighs> Geek Workshop says perhaps Bruce has a mental disorder. I mean, if you're going to try to take it realistically, he probably does. And that's the problem with some superheroes is you can only go so realistic before you end up with like Watchmen and other deconstructionist stories, which are, which are certainly interesting. But you have to sort of set aside some logic to have it be fun. Mark L. Dude says, Grant Morrison once said, you don't go through all these martial arts and meditation lessons and still come out an asshole. <laughs> 
<laughs> I haven't heard that quote, but that's uh, that's really good. You know, come out and ask. Well, that, that's true. It's all about like meditating and centering yourself and not attacking people. Uh, True Fan Forum made a really bad pun. I'm not going to repeat it. <coughs> uh, anyway. Hmm. Sorry, drinking the last of some Mountain Dew. What time is it? I've still got a little time. Good. What do I have for technical bags? Miles is more of a clone than Ben Riley. Maybe. I think that Miles is finally starting to um, go more and more in his own direction. I mean, he was sort of created as a jumping on point for people that were interested in Spider-Man, you know. So, um, I think it's okay that he was so similar to Peter. But I think he's finally starting to go in his own direction. I, I really personally really like the Miles Morales character. I like that he's just a good kid and that he's noble and s smart and nerdy. I don't know. I really like him a lot. So that's me. I understand that not everybody does. I can even understand why. But personally, I do like the Miles Morales character a lot. And a lot of that may, it might have to do with his costume design. I like his costume. <coughs> Let's see here. What do we got? Me, Grimlock. I liked Grimlock a lot as a kid because he had such a big broad personality and he was uh, a little chaotic you know he was he was chaotic good that made him more interesting than just uh, everybody else That's the character I'm drawing, by the way. His name is Grimlock. Shouldn't take it for granted that everybody knows who he is. That's, uh... But this is a character from my childhood that I dig. What else are people talking about? Um, Victor says, hey Chris, what was the first character you ever created? I remember drawing my first character, Acid Man, back in third grade. I'm still looking around my bedroom for those old comics. Uh, ooh, uh, googly guy, googly guy. Here, I'll, I'll draw the characters that I created um, as a kid. I'll just flip this over. The first one I created, I had to be in like nursery school or first grade, and he was called Googly Guy. I hope I sort of remember how to do this. Um, I think I will. And he, um, he mainly just like fell off cliffs and held bombs that exploded. You know, he just sort of got hurt a lot. Oh my gosh, a lot of this is coming back to me. Um, I haven't tried to draw this since I was a little kid. I, this is amazing that it's still there. That's him. Oh, I gotta zoom in. Um, give me a sec here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Mark, this is a fantastic pencil. This is, this is really, really good. Let me zoom in a little. 
Okay, so when I was very young, that's who I created, Googly Guy. He had a mustache here, a belt, stick hands, feet that looked like a musical note, backwards ball cap. <coughs> he kind of looks like Ned Flanders. Well, I'm old. This guy came out way before Ned Flanders. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times, I mean, yeah, there would just be a bomb that would get thrown in at him, and he would get blown up. <laughs> So that was one, um, and then I, when I was a little older in like middle school or something, I created um, Immortal Guy and Worm Boy, and Worm Boy was like more like some sort of a leech. I'm trying to remember Th this one, I didn't draw as much, but he was short and strong. Let's see, he had kind of big muscles. But he only had like three fingers, I think. These were his eyes. They were sort of had these gross little feelers under his head. And he was like all segmented under his costume. So he'd like. I don't remember. He had some sort of a symbol here, but I don't really remember what it was. And he was kind of squat. And I think this guy was more sort of, you know, I'm doing a really basic cartoony version of him. Um, I'm not trying to draw really well right now. I would, I would draw him more detailed when I was younger. And I think he was probably pretty influenced by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if I had to guess. Um, that's what I'm seeing sort of now as I draw him. He's just like, you know, a weirdo mutant. Although I don't remember intentionally trying to, like, rip off their stories or anything. I just look at him now. It's kind of like a comedy-type book. And I, I don't remember... Immortal guy, but he was, you know, more of like, you know, the square jawed. Anyway, those are some guys that I created. Are there comics that you feel didn't or haven't gotten enough recognition or coverage? Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of why I did my um, year end recap of like the top, my top 10 books. I don't think everybody's reading um, Seven to Eternity by Rick Remender. Um, I don't think uh, that many people are reading Black, which is a pretty fantastic anthology. And um, what do you call it? Um, my Favorite Thing is Monsters was like a really, really interesting uh, book this, this past year. A uh, graphic, big graphic novel. Um, so those are some of the ones that I think people should uh, know about. But there's always some books like that, right? And uh, believe it or not, this was before Deadpool, but this is uh, this was Immortal Guy's Mask. It was it was sort of like Spider-Man, so you know probably coming from the same place. Um, but that's what he had for a mask and. Uh, I think he might have had like a big eye on his chest. It's hard to remember. Nobody had caves. An immortal guy, his only power was like healing really well. And um, oh, again, kind of like Deadpool. That's funny. Uh, this was long before Deadpool came around. Um, and he would, uh, he would just basically get hurt really bad all the time. Kind of like Googly Guy. He'd have like bombs and stuff thrown at him. And uh, uh, yeah, he would just get hurt. I don't remember exactly the cost, but anyway, whatever. <sighs> Geek Workshop, I would buy a Google Guy comic, your kind. <laughs> uh, Googly Guy would be a good enamel pin. <laughs> oh, it was really just, you know, a guy that just got hurt all the time. There was nothing to it. He was just the guy that constantly ended up in accidents.
How about you guys? Does anybody remember a character that you created or drew a bunch when you were a kid? Someday I might have to um, do an episode. I don't know how I would, but when I was 10 years old, I made a 60-page Transformers comic book. This was before I'd even discovered that there was a Transformers comic book. I just knew about, like, comic strips from the newspaper. But I just, like, drew 60 pages of a Transformers comic at 10 years old. And it's bad. It's really bad. I mean, you can see the art get a little bit better over 60 pages, but it's still a 10-year-old's drawings. And it's a 10-year-old storytelling sense, which means it's basically just regurgitating the same plots that I've seen on TV over and over and over. It was so bad. <laughs> Sly Fly Guy says, I just finished reading old Dazzler comics, and I think she deserves her own series again. Dazzler could be an interesting character to, uh, to take a serious look at, for sure. She was created because Marvel was trying to get a... Um, make a, a, a musical stage play. And so they needed to create a new character uh, that would be the star of that. And then the, the actual musical fell through. That would be kind of fun to go into the history of sometime for, for one of the episodes. Marvel's failed uh, movie and TV and stage productions. The ones that didn't come to be. That could be interesting, right? I think so. What else are people asking? Sorry. Um, Geek Workshop says, I remember creating a character named Rick Fighter. <laughs> it's kind of a good name, actually. Top Turtle says, do you watch anime? If so, you should watch My Hero Academia. I used to watch a lot in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. <clears throat> Not as much these days, um, unless I hear of something that's uh, really well reviewed. But I, uh, that said... Uh, you are not the first uh, viewer to recommend that to me. A lot of people have told me I should check out the manga or anime for um, My Hero Academia. I haven't seen it yet. Um, that does sound cool. Mueller says, Black felt like basically black people are mutants, and the social commentary was kind of too on the nose for me, but was okay in my opinion. Um, well, I mean, the, the idea was what if you know, a disenfranchised minority were the only ones to get superpowers, how would that potentially change the world? And I thought that that was just an interesting premise to, to start from, personally. <coughs> it's got a lot of different types of stories within that. Um, Miller says he basically drew Captain Serbia in fifth grade. Cool. Geek Workshop says, please make a digital version of your Transformers comic. I will buy that. Uh, and Shirley says, do you still have the 60 pages? I do. I do have the pages. Um, it was penciled, so I don't, it would be, it wouldn't look great when it's scanned. Um, you know what I mean? Because it's kind of light. In person, you can read it just fine. But um, And I drew front and back, so there's like so lots of like, uh, on regular typing paper. So the paper is a little, not crumpled, but you know, you've got that indentation on both sides from the drawings. Is there any case you can, is there any case to see you draw some original comic cover with your art style, says Vasilis. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Um, I hadn't, I don't know, I've never really tried to copy a famous cover, but 
That's an interesting idea, Vasilis. Uh, I'll give that some thought. And I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. I'm doing my best guess. Hello, Marcelo. Nice to see you. Happy 2018. Sly Fly Guy wants to know who my favorite artist is, and his is Brian Boland. Well, Brian Boland's a great choice. Uh, fantastic artist. Uh, one of the best cover artists, for sure. I'll definitely say that. I'm getting a little headache. Um, my favorite artist. Um, Will Eisner is way up there. So is um, so is John Romita Sr. Um, so those are two. Uh, wow, that's an interesting question. I could talk about a, a ton of my favorite comic artists forever. That's a hole I'm not going to necessarily go down right now. But Brian Boland is, is definitely a fantastic one. Dave Johnson is someone I personally love. He doesn't do a whole lot of comics, um, and he certainly doesn't do a whole lot of interior pages anymore. But I really love um, Dave Johnson. I think he's a pretty fantastic comic book artist. Um, Travis Charest became really, really good. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. i got to think about that. That is a tough one. Wow. What was your New Year's resolution, asks Geek Workshop. Isn't this like a wish? If I tell it, it won't come true? Um, I didn't really, uh, I just lose weight, get a job, lose weight. And I'll be plenty happy if I can uh, do that. Um, so, kind of mundane. <sighs> kind of mundane. How about you guys? Anybody have an interesting resolution like this is the year I'm going to get published or something like that? I've been depressed for quite a while, and it's made me put on a, a lot of weight. Um, it's upsetting. Uh, I used to, believe it or not, work out quite a lot. So, yeah, I really want to lose weight this year. Marcelo says, do you remember when you did comic tropes challenges like eating peppers or drinking sake? Yes. Yes, I, I remember it quite well. In fact, uh, I'm probably going to be doing one with electricity soon. I'll leave it at that for now. Um, I, I started to uh, do that less and less because I really do want to focus more on the review of comics or discuss comics history. I did that fun stuff for myself, but I also sort of feel like it's a little bit of like I'm taking time out from doing a review and then going back to the review. And I don't know how well that, that really translates for, for the average viewer. I think it can be fun personally. That's why I did it. Um, but I, I, I do it a lot less now. But yes, <laughs> I used to do it. Uh, Top Turtle says, what is your opinion on Aliens, not the movie? Um, mm, I... Uh, I don't think we've been visited by aliens, if that's what you're asking. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that, you know, there could be life out there, but I, I don't think uh, uh, it's uh, visited Earth. Not intelligent, like, technologically advanced life. I think that uh, there's a great chance that there are, like, uh, living organisms of some sort out there. In fact, sometimes I 
feel like it's the most likely explanation for how life here got started. Like maybe it was on some comet or something and it got seeded here. Or like at least the building blocks for it. But, uh, but I don't know. I'm not a scientist, so these are just random musings. I think it would be interesting, but uh, I think at, at heart I'm a, a pretty big skeptic about a lot of things. Um, I think that they make good stories, but I don't necessarily uh, believe in ghosts or aliens or anything like that. Sorry. I think uh, I think the world's pretty interesting anyway without all that. Um, jumping jacks. Okay. Uh, yeah, surely electricity. I uh, get a taser delivered tomorrow. Oh, wait, I'm giving away too much. All right, Mark L. Dude says, I want to make more comics this year. I made two last year, but also started drawing. want to get better at anatomy and perspective. Um, <coughs> for perspective, just learn how to use um, a ruler in a really big drawing area so that you can learn um, one, two, and especially three-point perspective. Um, be patient. And then um, for drawing people better, there's nothing better than life drawing. Draw draw real people. If you can get to, like, uh, what do you call it, like um, either classes or... Uh, uh, like drink and draw sketch groups, things like that, that have a model. Great. If not, just uh, sit outside sometimes and uh, draw. I think that those are the best ways to uh, get better at that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Do you think they should bring back the What If comics? <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I love what if comics. I think that um I think it needs a regular break because there's only so many stories to um sort of analyze and, and, and say, oh, what if this happened or that happened? And then I think you need to take a break. But um yeah, I I, I love the, the what if uh, comics quite a bit, so I'm all for uh, the idea of uh, that coming back. The Black Lightning show premiered tonight, and I thought it was okay. What are your thoughts about the character? Um, got a lot of thoughts about the character. Um, I'm probably going to do it in a video, Sly Fly Guy. Um, I, I like the character quite a bit. I think he's uh, a very um, dynamic, interesting uh, character that, um, yeah, like subverts a lot of expectations, actually. Um, but, um... I haven't seen the show yet, so so I don't have much to say about that yet. I just find it hard to believe that we could be the only living life forms. Um, yeah, I agree. I just don't know about intelligent life forms you know there 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 there's so many conditions you need for for that um so tough question marcello says mark crilly has some really in deep tutorials on drawing perspective also modern day james well there you go uh what about the recent pentagon footage it seems like we might be visited already I think the aliens have a prime directive sort of thing, but that's just me. Maybe. I don't have uh, any evidence against it, <clears throat> so maybe. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, I don't think they've made contact with us, because I really don't think our current president could possibly keep his mouth shut about something like that. He'd be like, holy crap, there's aliens. I gotta tell everybody. That's just, uh, 
That's just one thought about it. And in general, I don't think, um, I think somebody would have said something um, and provided evidence by now if uh, we had been visited. It doesn't mean that uh, they're not out there. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Who knows? What are your thoughts on Last Jedi, says Geek Workshop? Um, maybe not a popular opinion. I loved it. That was exactly what I wanted out of a Star Wars movie. I thought that it was about something all around. Like, every single hero in there, from, like, Poe to Finn to Rey, all had to deal with failure. And I think that's a really exciting to see in, like, a big budget movie, to basically see them make choices that lead to failure, and then how do they deal with that failure to keep going? Because that's heroic to me. If you're faced with a huge setback or something doesn't work, and then you find a way to just power through or to learn how to change something about how you've been doing things, like, oh, so I loved it. I loved Last Jedi. I mean, yeah, like thematically, everything worked for me. The character growth, the action scenes, um, you know, there's a couple things that I might have shortened, but it was, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Probably not popular. I know that there's lots of people that say they don't like it for various reasons. I liked it a lot. Let's see. Uh, uh, I agree. I really liked Last Jedi 2. Everybody else seems to hate it, though. You know what? It's a loud voice, but it's a small minority. You can just look at, like how well it's doing in theaters. Like, overall, people like it. Trump is from Mars confirmed. <laughs> I liked a lot of the ideas and themes in The Last Jedi, but the ex execution was bad, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but for me, it worked. I'm a big fan of Ryan Johnson. Um, I like Looper, and I love Brick. That's one of my favorite movies. Like, that's a great, great mystery. So I think he does great character development. Um, I feel like there's something else that I've seen by him that's slipping my mind right now. But that director just, yeah, it, it clicks with me. So I like it. Um, look, folks, I know I didn't finish here. I'm going to zoom back out to show you what I did do. But I got to take off. Um, I've got a few other things to do. Um, I appreciate you all hanging out with me while I just sort of doodle around. Um, you know, I found that when I do these technical drawings, they tend to take a lot more time, so I, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry that I uh, wasn't able to, to finish this one. I'll try to just throw in a couple um, of the main details here to give it some form. But um, I appreciate you all asking such interesting questions and uh, hanging out. Uh, I appreciate everybody's support quite a bit. Uh, I really think I've got some great episodes for Comic Tropes coming up. I've been putting a lot more thought into what I want the show to be uh, and what I think will will give people the best viewing experience. So I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to uh, slowly, or not even slowly, but just like I'm trying to always make it better, you know? I'm trying to, to improve all, every every episode and uh it's really nice that you guys have been with me uh for as long as you have and i and i really think that there's some great stuff coming up at, uh in the next several months let's see that. uh so yeah and i'll just and Sort of goes around like that. Get my hand out of the way in two seconds. All of a sudden, I'm going really fast after like taking my time and answering questions and everything. But um, 
I can draw pretty fast when I need to, but I, I, I feel like uh, I make mistakes. I, I, the one reason I'm really doing this is I don't have the confidence to draw quickly. And I think that when I draw quickly, it does have an energy to it. You know, like there's some movement or personality that's uh, inserted in there. So I'm really trying to get better so that I'm more confident and I can work faster. But uh, it's hard. It, it's hard. Is that, okay, so this is part of Dinobot Grimlock. Anyway, so that's pretty much the drawing. You guys get it. What do you think about Disney purchasing Fox? Mm. Let's hope that um, they produce some good stuff. <clears throat> I don't love the idea of um, one company having so much power or Fox getting so much money from this sale, but, you know, at least the Marvel stuff is, I, 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 I'm comfortable with, but beyond that, it's, uh, it's a little scary to think of uh, one company having so much control of so much media. There and there. That should be darker. Eh, you know, you get the idea there, I think. What I'm going for. Um, let's see. Okay, a lot of people say Paddington, pheno Paddington 2 is phenomenal. Is it good? Don't know. Haven't seen the first one. I do have it on my Netflix queue. I do want to see it at some point. I like Paddington. I haven't seen the movies. I just hope Disney revives Firefly. I miss it so much. That'll definitely happen. Yeah. I think you should start getting your hopes up right now. Hold your breath. That's happening. Um, <coughs> thank you all for, for, for the very lively discussion today. This was great. Um, I'll do it again soon. I'll, um, you know, I, I need to draw actual pages, panels, um, and, and for, from, from scratch. Uh, so, so that's something uh, when I get an idea, uh, i got to force myself to think of an idea so that I can do that with uh, all of you sometime soon. We can start talking about stuff beyond just the... Uh, you know, pop culture stuff and little sketch details we could talk about, like the actual art of comics creation, panel to panel uh, transitions and things like that. All right. Uh, you guys are great. Keep reading comics. Got some great new episodes coming to you soon. Bye.